Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do some harder derivatives. Uh, most of the time, these are just combinations of a couple rules um, at the same time. So let's look at the, the first one. Y equals sine to the fourth of 3x. When you look at this, you see a trig function, you see a power, and then you see a 3x, and all of those are going to play the same role. I want to encourage you to think about this as sine of 3x. 3x is the argument of sine, and all of that is to the fourth. I know this silly notation confuses people, but that's what this means here. And really then what we're doing here is we're thinking power rule is the big rule, then a trig function, and then we just have to multiply by kind of the chain rule at the very end. Okay, so when we take this derivative here, we're going to bring down the power using the power rule, decrease the power by 1, and again, look what happened to my argument. My argument stayed the same. Right? Bring the 4 down, decrease it by 1, and now I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The inside is now a trig function. The derivative of sine of 3x, well really it's just the derivative of sine, is cosine of 3x, and then I do have to apply an additional piece of the chain rule there at the end and get it times 3, because the derivative of sine of 3x, well the 3x creates that 3. Again, it's kind of like a power and a trick rule, and again, I would suggest writing it like this, reminding you that it's really just a power rule. Um, okay, we kind of can do the same thing if you have something like um, nat log of 2x all to the fourth. Remember, this isn't 2x to the fourth. This is the nat log of 2x to the fourth. And it ends up being that same thing. Power rule says bring the power down, decrease the power by 1, times the derivative of the inside. The inside is a logarithm. The derivative of a logarithm is u prime over u. So I get a 2x excuse me, a 2 over a 2x, right? 1 over u times u prime, and that u prime is 2. And you could cancel the 2s here if you wanted to simplify it. And again, this is really power rule and then a log rule, always using the chain rule kind of the whole time. Um, okay, let's do a triple product rule. What if you had a function y that was u times v times some w, right? All three of those are their own functions. I'll do it in the abstract, then I'll kind of show you an example. So what they're first going to do is, I'm going to think of this, and I can group this however I want to, and I'm going to think of this instead of u times v times w, let's pretend it's just two functions. A function uv, which happens to be its own product, times another function w. And then we'll follow the typical product rule that says, when we have a, uh, the derivative of, of two functions multiplied together, we take the first function, uv, times the derivative of the second function, which I'll call w prime, plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. You're like, oh, look at that. The first function is a product itself. So when I take the derivative of the first function, I have to do its own product rule, which is uv prime plus vu prime. And if you look what I have here, it's total symmetry. I have uv w prime uw v prime plus vw u prime and again there's nice symmetry there and again you would use this if you had something like 2x times sine of 3x times e to the 4x and again you can group them however you want to and you can use this, you can use this result, or you can derive it each from, each from scratch. So y prime, I'm going to group it like this. I'm going to take the first function, 2x sine of 3x, times the derivative of this, which is e to the 4x times 4, plus the second function, e to the 4x, times the derivative of the first function, but the first function's its own. I'm going to take 2x, times the derivative of sine of 3x, which is cosine 3x times 3, plus sine of 3x times the derivative of the first, which is just that 2. And again, this whole thing can simplify a little bit, but 
Um, you can multiply that out. You could factor out an e to the 4x, but again, it is really just looking at that. Again, this is kind of a triple product rule. Okay, let's do y equals, and we'll do x sine x. Okay, and you might be tempted to say, well, isn't that just power rule? Power rule is when you have some x to the n, but remember, n is some rational numbers. You know, this 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 is a 2 or a 5 or a 2 thirds or a negative 3, something like that, where you bring the power down, decrease the power by 1. So this doesn't apply because sine x is a function. You're like, oh no, it's not power rule. It's an exponential, and an exponential is a to the u. Wait, but x and a aren't the same. a is some constant number, right? a is some real number. X isn't a real number. I have this as a function to a function. I don't really know what to do. So what happens here is that you end up applying logarithms. So you take this original function and you apply logarithms to both sides. Now what happens for a logarithm, it allows us to bring that down. Again, that's a property of a logarithm that just comes in handy. Because what I've done here is by applying logarithms, I've changed a function to a function into just the product of two functions. Now, it does make me hey, take the derivative of natural log of y. You might want to in, um, look back on implicit differentiation if you struggle here, but y is its own function. And so if you follow the derivative rules for the natural log, the derivative of the natural log is u prime over u. So when I take the derivative of the natural log of y, I get y prime over y. And over here, I just get product rule. So sine x, the first function, times 1 over x, the derivative of the second function, plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So then I get y prime equals, sin, I'm just gonna put that in the denominator, sine x over x plus the natural log of x cosine x. All of that times y, and you're like, oh, but what is y? Well, I can just get rid of y because boom, y equals x sine x. So I can replace y by x sine x, and then look, I have the derivative of y with respect to x, just in terms of x. Now, I know this is messy, but that's about as simple as it can get because that's a fairly complex question. Again, we can do all sorts of combination rules between power rule and trig rule, power rules with chain, with log rules, triple product rules. Um, we can use logarithms to, to solve one like this. And again, it really wouldn't matter what those two functions are. And then I really just have one more I thought I would throw out there. Oh, actually, I, I do have two. Let's, let's use one more sheet. So I, I do think it's a, a nice thing to talk about the fake quotient rule. And I call it a fake quotient rule because if you have a function like, oh, I don't know, 4 over x plus 1 cubed, I really don't think you should treat that as a quotient. Now, if you do, it's fine. It'll work out. But I would really think about rewriting it like this and then just applying the power rule. Because when you get it like this, when you do the power rule, you just bring the power down to make that a negative 12, decrease the power by 1 to make it negative 4, times the derivative of the inside, but the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1. And then you can simplify that if you want to just make it negative 12 over x plus 1 to the fourth. I particularly, if this is just a constant up here, I wouldn't do quotient rule. You can. It'll give you the same value. The derivative of the constant is 0, so the one of those terms will go away. But... There's kind of that fake quotient rule. And then the other one uh, I want to do is what happens if you have y equals, oh, let's say x squared tangent of 3x all over, oh, we'll say e to the 2x. Again, what you have here is a quotient rule and a product rule. Now, the big rule is the quotient rule. It clearly is a quotient, but when you end up taking the derivative of the numerator, again, I'm gonna write down quotient rule here. Quotient rule is v u prime minus u v prime over v squared. So that's our big rule that I'm gonna do. And the product rule, I'm gonna have to use up top. Again, product rule is u v prime plus v u prime. Again, nice symmetry there. Okay, so when I take this derivative, I'm going to take v, so the denominator, times the derivative of the numerator. Now, the numerator is its own product, so the derivative of a product, now I have to do product rule. So x squared 
times the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared 3x times 3 using the chain rule, plus the second function, tangent 3x times 2x. Okay? And all this whole thing is, is just v u prime. Okay? Now minus u, that's just this, x squared tangent of 3x times v prime. The derivative of e to the 2x is just e to the 2x times 2 all over e to the 2x squared. And again, I'm not going to do anything to simplify this. I know lots of things um, can be simplified here. This e to the 2x and e to the 2x, and one of these e to the 2x's can cancel. Um, but I'm just going to leave it like that. I just wanted to show you another example of some combination rule where this is a quotient rule, but within the quotient rule, you have to deal with a product rule. Those are at least some of the harder questions you're going to see when it comes to taking derivatives um, and using the chain rule um, and also using a combination of rules. Hopefully this helps.